Good morning, everybody. Today is book of the week day. Yeah. Today's book of the week being The Knee Bone Boy. Again, I regret to tell you that this is a mystery and I'm not going to give you spoilers. But of course I can't give you nothing. Otherwise, why would you want to read it? What happens is these three British kids are sent to London to stay with their aunt. Unfortunately, their aunt is on holiday in Germany, and they cannot stay with her. So instead, they go to this little town called Snoring on the Sea to stay with their great aunt Hattie. Um, I really love the characters in these books. They're very real and very weird, which is- it, it's a very interesting blend. You know, um, Max, Lucia, Otto, Aunt Hattie. They're actually all honorary pictures in my cubby. I haven't explained to you about the cubby pictures! Okay, I think it's about time that I explained what the pictures in my cubby are for. Um, they're all characters from books that I've read. Who is that back there? Oh, it's Hugo Cabrera and his large clock. Um, yes. All three of the hard scrabbles are in here, somewhere. There's Otto. There he is. Yes, I did draw all of these. There's Great Aunt Hattie. I like her a lot. Um, here's Max. And Lucia. I have no idea. There she is. There we go. All right. Anyway, I want to tell you about the hard scrabble children. The book is written by one of the hard scrabbles, but they never say which one it is. It's really obvious, but I'm not going to tell you just so that you can enjoy puzzling it over for a few chapters. <laughs> the youngest of the hard scrabbles is Max, who is basically a walking dictionary. Very smart, very sarcastic, very clever. I think that he would get on well with Sherlock. Lucia is the middle child and the only girl. Very real, I think, and very, very English. She's adventurous, refusing to be done, outdone by her little brother, or her older brother, for that matter. Lucia and Max argue a lot. I mean, a lot. And then there's Otto. And Otto's very strange. I mean, it says it repeatedly in the book, but of course it doesn't just say, Otto's strange. I mean, it shows it in multiple ways that I'm going to explain to you now. There are two main odd things about Otto. The first thing is that he doesn't talk. Um, it'll say in the book, Otto says, but he's not really speaking, he's using sign language and talking to Lucia and Max. And it explains that fairly early on, to be honest. But yeah, it's a little confusing at times. So. I thought I should just explain this to you. And he's not like deaf or he hasn't had his tongue cut out. Nothing's wrong with him, he just does not talk. There are parts in the book that will just have you on the edge of your seat going, ah, ah, no, no, it does not ever happen. I wanted it to, but it didn't. The other thing is his scarf. Um, I've often considered making his scarf because I think it would be really cool, um, but I don't have any silver, so I can't do the leaves, and it's that is the only thing that's been stopping me from putting it, from making it. Black scarf with silver oak leaves. Mentioned many, many times in the book, so. And the thing about the scarf is he never takes it off. Ever. Like, maybe in the shower, but other than that, no, just never. And those are just a couple of the weird things that make Otto the broken, sad character that is my favorite. I love him. Quite a bit. So back to the plot, uh, not my personal headcanon, um, they go to Snoring on the Sea, where they start to learn things about their mother, who mysteriously disappeared several years ago. Not saying anymore. Not, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> The whole thing is a lot like um, a series of unfortunate events, but it's a lot funnier and a lot lighter. It's got some great chapter headings, and they just... Chapter 1, in which we meet the hard scrapples, unearth a triceratops bone, and begin to like Lucia even more. Chapter 7, in which the hard scrapples discover a triolian traverse, 
meet Grand Aunt Hattie, and get spat upon. Chapter 6, in which the hard scrabbles meet a viking, a zebra, and a bogus wild boar. Also, there's a cat. Chapter 20, in which the hard scrabbles admit they are not normal. Not at all. And then the worst are the vague ones. Chapter 17, I'm not telling you a single thing about this chapter because it will ruin everything. Chapter 2, in which Otto finds something interesting. Lucia listens to nothing at all, and more stuff happens. Chapter 16, in which something awful happens, but I can't say what it is. Chapter 5, in which London grows dark. It's just things like that that make it a very clever, amusing, witty book. I like it a lot. It's a very compelling book about three kids with a mysterious past that the reader wants to know more about, and that they want to know more about. It's a very cool, unusual book with lots of unexpected twists and turns that, you know, would make Moffat, well, at least pleased. Very well written by someone. Whoa. But other than that, it's a great book, wonderful read, definitely do it. I personally love this book quite a bit. Um, and anyway, I will see you guys next week, or sooner, for the Percy Jackson series! Ah! Alright. I love you. Wait, no, I have more stuff to tell you. I can't say goodbye yet. I made a second channel, and I put a video on it. Um, it's a video of me explaining cellular respiration, but before you click on this little box, I think I should warn you. I failed my science test today, so, um, <laughs> yeah, just keep that in mind while you're watching. Leave the annotations on. Um, <laughs> bye! Chapter 1, in which we unearth a t in which we unearth the hard scrabbles. Chapter one, in which we meet the hard scrabbles. Uns er, 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 er. Chapter seven, in which the hard scrabbles. Hard blah, 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 blah. Chapter seven, in which the hard scrabbles discover a triolian traverse. Make meet. With <laughs> Chapter eight, in which the hard scrabbles gag on peanut butter and jelly, and then are locked in the dungeon, where Max begins to think deeply and importantly. <laughs> like it's just. Things like that. It's it's a very clever, amusing book. I've I have and I, I so instead they go to this little town called Snoring on the Sea to stay with their great aunt Hattie. Good. Yes. All right. Don't do the thumbs up. You look stupid, Liz. So anyway, it's my I love it in here. It's good, and it's not finished as you can. As you've, pro as you've probably noticed before, so, yeah. Yeah, that's a snake. Alright, I will see you guys later. What? What are you doing here?